dive. To dive beneath the surface and into the minds and hearts of your favorite celebrities and pop culture icons. Welcome to Up and Adam. Hi, 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 guys. Welcome back. Ha, here we are. Guys, today's Friday. I always say this every single day of the week. I say, this is my favorite day. Um, well, usually it is because today's the day that I do pop pops off on pop culture. And I love this day because usually Pops and I get to sit down. He has all of his notes from all week where he watches all of his favorite shows. And then we do a whole video right after Southern Charm. Guys, all of you guys have been asking me so much, so I want to start off with this, but um, how Pops is doing. And Pops is still in the hospital till Tuesday. He's doing better, um, got out of his procedure. So we're just sending him all the love and light. Um, we're going to buy him flowers from Hermian. So there's so many, you know, so much love for him. There's an abundance of love, and that's awesome. Unfortunately, today we won't be able to do Pops Pops Off. But the more important thing is, or the most important thing is that Pops gets better. So we'll give him a break for today. Pops, you get the day off, and then we'll revisit this maybe next week or even the week after, depending on how he's feeling. Um, in the meantime, though, today we're here to talk about Southern Charm. Uh, if you guys haven't already, make sure you hit the like button. It helps us tremendously. And let's jump right into this episode. Guys, so Southern Charm, I know that the whole main storyline of this season was going to be, you know, Austin Madison and John Pringle. But I didn't know there was going to be a moment where, at least this early, where John Pringle and Austin were going to go head to head. Now, obviously, we didn't see that moment on camera. But if you guys watched last night's episode, um, it kind of just picked up where we left off last week when it, John Pringle at the bar letting Austin know, hey, dude, your girlfriend's a smoke show. Now, nobody in their right mind would ever say that about somebody's girlfriend unless you just want to beat down. I, I mean, you can't call somebody's girlfriend a smoke show. That's so rude and kind of ignorant unless they're I, I don't know. Anyways, it ends up kind of snowballing. As the night goes on, after the production crew leaves, and it gets worse. So he doesn't stop. John Pringle is not going to let up on the fact that, you know, he likes Madison. He's conflicted on where he stands in his relationship with Madison, which is completely non-existent at this point, and also his friendship with Austin, which is also completely non-existent at this point. You know, watching this, I thought it was interesting because Madison's really enjoying it. Madison's really enjoying the fact that she has these two men fighting over her and doesn't bother her. I thought it was pretty bold, though, because Austin, like, finally snapped back at his house saying, dude, get out of my house, you know, because Pringle actually approached Madison, letting her know his feelings. Again, guys, I think this is incredibly disrespectful. I wouldn't condone that, but, you know, Austin told him to get out. But Pringle didn't necessarily listen. Pringle stood up, used his dad voice, talked like that, and shut Austin down. Uh, Madison thought it was kind of hot, but for me, I was just like, man, you're causing a lot of problems here. Even though it's not Madison causing the problems, it's technically Pringle. I'm just not, I'm not digging this, this vibe here. Um, we do move on and try to get to know John Pringle a little bit more when he's getting ready for his kids to come visit from San Diego. He starts setting up the room and making sure that the sheets are Fortnite and everything else in between, making sure that they have rafts and beach towels and everything ready to go. But also coronavirus has just kind of landed in the United States of America at this point. But I'm watching John Pringle and I'm watching him talk on the phone about his kids coming. And it just seems like I, sometimes I wonder where this guy's head's at. I'm not going to sit here and be disrespectful, rip this guy apart at, or anything like that. But when he's getting asked about the rafts and the beach towels, he's like, yes. And then there's a spot for my beer. And then when he's talking about Madison and Austin, he's like, I just have a problem for wanting to take other guys' girlfriends. That is a problem because one day somebody's going to, somebody's going to show you how big of a problem you're being. And again, we don't push for that, but who acts like that? Why don't you go out and find one of the other fish in the sea that are single, just like yourself? And maybe going after other people's girlfriends, that might be why you're not able to maintain a relationship because it seems like the the morals behind it, there just are none. And I don't know if you guys feel the same way. If you do, you can go ahead and chime in below. And actually, while we're getting started, let me go ahead and drop that link in case you guys do want to chime in on this. You're more than welcome. Let me see. Drop the link right here. And let's keep it moving. 
Okay, so we move on and we start seeing that Craig understands that he has to get out of Austin's house. Now, Craig has the, I can't ever say this word, obsestos, obsestos, obsestos. I, I'm not even gonna try to butcher, butcher it, but obsestos or obsestus has that in his house and it's gonna cost him $38,000 to get it fixed. Wow. That's not even counting the kitchen renovation that he has as well. You know, I know that he has a, a successful pillow line now at this point. So he has the money and the money rolling in for Southern Charm. But I was really surprised at the fact that he can afford to do all of that. He can afford to keep pushing his business and he can afford to rent out a, a rental for $3,800 a month. This guy's rolling in the dough. $3,800 a month is a lot of money, guys. I mean, if you think about it, at the end of the year, if he had to rent for a year, 12, 24, 36, 48, that's almost $48,000 at the end of the year. It's probably closer to like 45, but that's a lot of money. That's a down payment on a new house. So I wouldn't want to throw that away. We completely understand why he would be doing that though, because I think it was his sister or somebody who told him uh, fish and house guests stink after three days. He gets it. He also knows that Austin and him, they're bad influences on each other and it's probably not conducive to a healthy lifestyle. But then as soon as he gets into the new spot, he invites over Shep and that can't be conducive to a healthy lifestyle. This guy's kind of a wreck in his own. He, this guy, this man is 40 years old and the first thing he does when he walks in the place with his thing of Corona, thinking it's kind of a cute play on words, is like, yeah, can we party in here? It's, dude. You're 40 years old. How about like, go, I don't know. What is a party for, what is, what is this guy thinking? Like beer pong type of party or a, a Leva and Lamar type of party? Because I feel like they would do it super classy, rent out an event space, rent out a restaurant and kind of just go all out, you know? Where he's just like, yeah, dude, frat party. I just, I don't know. I was hoping to see more growth from Shep, but He's, he's just like one big man child. That's his role and that's not gonna change. I don't see that ever changing. So that's kind of where we stand with that. You know, Catherine, um, we see her kind of navigate what her life looks like now working and what's coming up with coronavirus. And she talks about how she posts for social media. She's technically an influencer. And through being an influencer, that's how she makes some of her money or probably the majority of her money that's not coming from Southern Charm. Um, now, I do have a friend that was on another show that's on Bravo. She's an influencer as well. And she, every time she posts, gets about $10,000 a post. So if they reach out to her and they're like, hey, so-and-so, um, you do this like skinny tea and then she does a post with it, boom, right there, $10,000. And if she does it three times a month, that's $30,000 that she just made. So you can totally make a healthy living off of your social media presence, you know? and. Catherine seems to be doing that and doing it just fine. When she shows up to the store and she tries on the dresses and she's twirling around and, you know, whatever the case is, I thought it was kind of cute. She actually treats this like a real influencer job where she's showing up, she's trying on fresh things, and it's not like somebody FedExed her a box of, again, skinny tea and said, okay, just do a post and we'll send you the money. That That's just very different. It seems like she's kind of taking it to a next level. So good for you, Catherine, before it's not. Okay, uh, moving on, we see that Craig and Pringle meet up to do suit shopping and it was going well um, until Pringle saw that the suit was, somebody's gonna correct me if I'm wrong, 1400 or 1800, it was something like that. I didn't write it down and it wasn't as important to stick at the top of my head. The point was that the suit was over a thousand dollars and Pringle was like, what? I'd have to put this on layaway. Okay, Pringle. We all know that Patricia wouldn't be pushing you on Madison if you had to put a fourteen or eighteen hundred dollar jacket on layaway. So we're not buying that. He just doesn't want to attract the gold diggers, and we get that. But then Patricia may not be the person who should be hooking you up, or Miss Patricia, just to be exact. Guys, eighty four in the room. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button. And if you want to, I drop the link. You're more than welcome to call. If you don't feel like calling, then we can just recap this together and move on with our day. Um, moving on though, at the suit buying or the shop, whatever, um, Craig asked the tough question to Pringle, you know, are we going to squash this and you and Austin can become friends, like be buds. And he says, TBD, what do you mean TBD, dude? This is still not your girlfriend. It's not TBD, TBD to, to be decided. No, that doesn't make any sense. How about go get your own girl? 
that's what this should be. But Craig does think that Miss Patricia had a big hand in trying to set Madison up because he feels like she really has it out for Austin. And John Pringle starting to admit while they're uh, suit shopping, God, that's a mouthful, suit shopping, that, you know, Miss Patricia does have a hand in his behavior in pushing him onto Madison. Now, Miss Patricia didn't say sit across from Austin and tell him that his girlfriend's a smoke show and then keep going on with it all night. But add a little bit of alcohol and a guy who doesn't care if he insults somebody and their girlfriend. And that's the kind of concoction that we have here. So moving on, uh, Madison ends up sitting down and FaceTiming Miss Patricia. The first time she gets hung up on because Miss Patricia is at an auction. And then the second time she gets hung up on, but not before discussing the Austin John Pringle kind of mashup. You know, when Miss Patricia came on her confessional and she said, I think it's okay to trade up. I was like, that's something that you keep in the back of your head. You don't just throw that out there on TV, but at at this point in her life and at her age, I don't think she cares. She really doesn't care what we think or what anybody else thinks. I think that she sees herself as a character. She wears that producer's cap and she knows exactly what she's doing. So good for you, Miss Patricia. Um, as far as a business and knowing what you're doing, though, I want to move back to Leva and Lamar because this is real. Coronavirus is really shutting down a lot of restaurants, small businesses, and even though their businesses don't seem small, it's not a big conglomerate. They don't have these like massive chain restaurants that have hundreds of different locations, you know, they still have to make ends meet and make their money. They've been in business for over seven years and Leva makes the statement that this could all come crashing down so fast and put us in the hole like no other. And then that's a scary thought. She ends up having everybody come over, all of her managers and stuff from the different restaurants so they can kind of figure out what they're doing. And you can see she's just stressing her butt off. Now I'm curious to see where Leva is now. And I have somebody in the room who might know. Um, before I bring her up, um, I just wanna go ahead and finish this. But I'm curious to see, have her restaurants shut down? Are they about to shut down again because we're about to go into another lockdown, potentially, or supposedly we're gonna go into another lockdown? Or are they, are they open and thriving? Because they could be. I don't know. Um, for her, I hope that they are. Actually, I'm going to bring up a Blobby and ask. Hi, Blobby. Hi. I haven't seen it, but I would imagine I would imagine she could still be in business because I don't think that South Carolina has like the extent that New York and L.A. does with our shutdowns. Okay. Because, I mean, even coming down to Florida, you know, just to be fair, every single restaurant is open. You don't have to wear the masks in the restaurant. It's, I mean, they're at full capacity. It seems like nothing ever happened here. But then when I was back in LA, it's like you're eating on the sidewalk. Um, you have to be X amount of feet apart. It, it seems like it's different rules. So maybe you're right. But I think they're, they're hurting because of the tourism. The tourism is like hurting a lot of people. I just called because I did not care for it. Um, I didn't care for Craig this episode. Why? I, I don't think it's funny to have somebody who's a conspiracy theorist when at times are these serious because Craig is not taking this serious. Okay. But also, what if Craig actually feels like this is something that could be technically, in his mind, he's scared thinking that the government made this whole thing up and it's not real? What if he actually firmly believes that? That's fine, and it's fine for him to believe, but I mean, speaking as a person who's been locked down for the last nine months, I'm not interested in seeing that on television. Right. Well, and also, he does have to understand, you know, the ramifications of being a public figure. This is a national platform. Actually, it's international, really, but a huge platform that he's on, and people, it, it does, sometimes it can sway people and it can affect how people think or someone who actually had coronavirus, this might hurt their feelings because you're acting like it doesn't exist and they're probably laying in a hospital bed, which is terrible. I just, I just thought like, see, this was the problem I have with reality shows. I was like, I don't want to see COVID all over the screen. And now, and now we're, and it's like, it's yeah. every franchise right now. But it's interesting because I mean I've gone traveling. I've gone to um, I've gone to Mexico. I've gone to Florida, and it's just interesting to see how like people don't wear masks. People are out. Um, everything's open. Like in New York, 
we are still at the point where nothing is open. Like, I, I don't think people understand. It's been nine months. Nothing is open. No, and, you know, I just did a, a live with uh, the Grace Report, and I was talking to her before we actually went on live, and she had to sneak out for the day because they only get one hour in the day that they are allowed out of their houses. And she's in France, but I, I was like, that's one hour? Really? That's still yeah. happening? And she's like, yes, it's still very, very real. No, well, us is not that bad. Like, you can go outside, but it's like no type of entertainment is open. Um, it's freezing outside. I have to go to the ZMV later. This has been a nightmare. Nothing is open. You have to get an appointment to go to every office. You have to get an appointment even to go to work. Because one of my jobs, I, I'm in the office building. Because we can't go to capacity, there can only be two people in the elevator. We have to pick and choose days when to work. Oh my gosh. See, and that's insane because even down here in the county that I moved to, they just lifted the the mask mandate. So it's like, we're on so, so many, we're so far off all over the world. You know, like people are taking it a lot more serious in some locations than they are in others. And it's, it's just interesting to see, you know, I went to, I social distance, but went to a restaurant bar the other day, mainly the bar portion of that, but sat at the bar and talked to the bartender who was from Chicago and she moved down from Chicago two months ago. And she's like, I was going to lose everything. She's like all of my money. I was bleeding through all my funds and I couldn't take it anymore. I was going crazy. And she actually had a friend who took her own life because of being stuck inside and going through her own like, you know, things. So it's, it was really sad to see, but then she said to me, um, where are you from? And I said, I just moved here from California. She said, nine out of 10 people who sit at my bar are either from New York, LA, um, California, Chicago, or somewhere that it's just really, really strict conditions. And I believe that. Well, I mean, I've gotten used to it, but I mean, like, I think I get like Craig feels differently and I'm, and I'm so happy that you don't have the restrictions that, that other people do, but there are people who are watching this show that literally cannot go outside for whatever reason. If you have health conditions, if you have, if you have, um, if you've had COVID, if you're having it now, there are people who can't see their families and they had to die alone. So I, what well, Craig, I don't know. He's always just had this sense of, not entitlement, but he, he's just very pompous. And I've I've never been able to tolerate him in large doses, but it was just really irking me. No, I understand that. There was actually a moment in this episode that really irked me. Um, and that was when Austin said, you know, in, to Madison right in front while she's like sitting there with her son Hudson, um, saying, you know, gold digger, that's what Miss Patricia wants you to be. I'm thinking in my head, why would you say that in front of her kid? Well, I, I really hope that people can do well because like I know in New York, the restaurant business is, I don't know how they're going to make it. I really don't. Especially like, it's not the like dives in the wall. It's like the expensive restaurants that are really struggling. No, I agree. I agree. And you know, I came, I come from a hospitality background and um, especially, you know, well, part of my background, but being back in LA, you know, there were a lot of businesses and restaurants that we were seeing just shut down all over the place. And I had some friends even who were trying to take advantage of the low rent um, and low mortgages because some of these big restaurants were getting pushed out and the people who owned the buildings were taking the mortgage and putting it way down here just to get somebody in. So now it's affecting the business owners, the people who own the buildings. It's, it's just a snowball effect. But it affects Craig too, because it affects him with shipping. I mean, shipping is crazy right now. I mean, like I live in New York, getting a package is a nightmare. Like toilet paper, I have to, I have, I'm one of those hoarders who have like three things of toilet paper, just because it took me three months to get toilet paper. See, oof. And right now it's getting bad again. They closed the schools down. They'll probably close the shops again. The grocery store is having lines now. Um, and then you can't really like, like the museum and stuff is open, but you have to like pay to go there at a certain time. Only a certain amount of people can be there. It's very isolating, which honey, I'm loving. I am like, if New York could be 
like half as busy. I am loving it. No tourists. I am loving it. But I realize that a lot of people's um, livelihood is being taken away. And I wonder when they shoot New York, I'm going to be honest. I don't really think they should shoot in the city. It's very depressing. Well, they've been shooting all over the place. Um, They've done a lot in uh, the Hamptons. They also did, is it Salem, Massachusetts? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they, it seems like they've been doing a lot of road trips and they've been in RVs and hopefully, I think they're taking the don't be tardy approach yeah. um, this season on New York. I'm sure they're going to do still in New York because it is the Real Housewives of New York, but I feel like they're not going to do so much in the actual city, like you said. Yeah, and it's just the city. Like, apparently when you go up, it's um, it's better, but like this coronavirus is really bothering. It's I like to travel, so for me, I have like three plane tickets, and I have no idea when I'll be able to go because, like, in other countries, they um they now do the COVID test at the airport, and I had and I can't go to Canada because the border is closed. I'm supposed to go to um I'm supposed to go to a wedding in in Panama. I call the embassy. They like don't even plan on going. Oh my gosh! So and it's the York. Well, it, and well, the city because I live in the city and all my things are in the city. They look at it and they're like, "Oh, well, your COVID is high over here." Oh, you know, because people still think when they think of it, you think of New York and LA. Yeah. Well, Ablavi, if you ever want to take a break and you can somehow get down to Florida. I'll, you can, I, it's, you won't be as locked down and I'll take you out to eat. But the problem, I can't go to Florida because if I go to Florida, I have to um, do a two week, two week isolation when I come back in New York. <sighs> this is rough. This is really hard on a lot of people. Yeah. Like, and it's about to be the holidays. Like I have relatives that live in other States. They can't come by because you know, they, they're not, they can come and I guess nobody will technically, but it's like, why risk it? Well, I'm curious real quick. There's another caller that's in the room. I'm going to bring her up with us because she's in Canada and I'm curious if it's a strict there. Um, because again, it's, it's different all over the place. I didn't realize that grace from the grace report could only go out for an hour of the day, but then that's very extreme as opposed to where you're at. But then where you're at is a lot more extreme than where I'm at. So Hi, Shan. Hey, Hi. oh, sorry. Ah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so yeah, our restrictions are amping back up. We had amazing numbers in my province, which is like a state um, for the first, I don't know, like five months. And now our numbers are ramping up. And so masks are finally mandated. They just mandated them yesterday. Isn't that wow. insane? That's crazy. We've been Isn't wearing masks for nine months they yeah. were doing sort of like the honor system like they didn't want to tell everybody what to do so they were like it's the right thing to do but we're not going to mandate it but they no, finally you, mandated you'll it get yesterday a ticket here you'll get a ticket here in I florida they'll that. charge or not florida in los angeles it's a it's a 300 or a 500 dollar fine if they catch you i love it but maybe our people are more compliant because i would say most people were wearing um but yeah now it's mandated and no not here people are like we're canadian we're polite <laughs> The kids go all the time without the mask. They're what? Scared. I had a, so I just want to say really quick in my building, um, the one that I just moved into, I had a woman the other day who I, she was being so nasty to the other woman that was in the elevator. There was three of us in the elevator, but mind you, it's a big elevator. So that was okay. But she, the woman had her mask and it was right below her nose. And that. this woman freaked out on her and just like kind of tore, ripped her head off. And I was like, whoa, but everyone feels differently about this and you know we don't know what each person's going through if they have family members who have suffered or lost or it's just this is such a big deal that's what our government said that's why they didn't want to mandate it because um like there's people with disabilities that can't put it on and off themselves so they didn't want them like accosted in the street okay they need to stay home well so that's um Okay, so I don't, you guys don't know my personal life, but generally I don't work on Fridays, but I physically had to come in today because it's the day when we have the least patients. So that's the same, like they have mandated where if you can work from home, you have to. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm here today because there's less patients in. Um, and then the rest of the time I work from home. You know, so that's funny because I have to have like a dentist appointment and I just refuse to go. And she's like, it's safe, it's fine. I was like, I do not need to catch something at that office 
because I get sick already when I go to the doctor's office and nothing's around. <laughs> <laughs> right. See, I refuse to go everywhere except the chiropractor. You offer me to go to the chiropractor and I'm like, sign me up. The doctor's and, office, I'm like, no, coronavirus. And the bar, you just said the bar. That yeah. doesn't count. That's listen, alcohol kills germs. True. Oh, I like that. I like that logic. Okay. And it, but <laughs> yeah. What I wanted to say is that for the first time ever, ever, Adam, I don't agree with you. About what? I think Shep is actually maturing. Do you remember earlier seasons? No, Shep has evolved. <laughs> I just feel, you know, listen, he might, okay, that's fair. That's fair, Shan. He's evolving, but is he ever going to get out of this big man child way of being? That, that, I think that is just Shep. True, but his man child. He, he, oh, okay. Because the moment his element, girlfriend yes. and Ablavi, you can, you can totally correct me if I'm wrong, but the moment his girlfriend, this is she, right now, it's the like gooey phase, right? So yeah. she's like, I'll tell you what you want to hear. Like, we'll keep it cool. I don't want to get married. I'm not going to put that pressure on you. But the thing is, the harsh truth is, you know, people eventually, as they grow older, they want certain things and that belief system might completely change. And at the point that it does, if he still cares about her enough, is he going to decide, you know what, that's starting to scare me. I'm only 40 something. Like I'm okay. not going to take that fit warning. next step. Warning, warning. <laughs> I will be saying things that people don't like. <laughs> Jeff is a communal penis. I'm sorry. You have oh my know. gosh. <laughs> a blobby. He was, he was, this is the first he time he's had like is. a real girlfriend. He and he even is. told his mom about her. Come on, Chef telling he, his mom. He's communal. He's for the community. You don't marry this guy. <laughs> Shep needs to be tricked into having a child, and then he will be a decent father. If she wants to get married, yes, he needs to be tricked into having a. No, you don't I need love to a trick. Blavi. Listen, you don't have to give that man a child. No, you need to take the cameras off of him, and then he'll grow up. Because no. now it's it's part of his business. It's part of his way of making money. He gets to play off of being this man child. But once the cameras stop rolling and Southern Charm ends, I have a feeling that's when he'll grow up. No, he has a trust fund. You need a. You have to trick him. You have to say, "Oh my God, I was losing medication," and like, don't take your birth control for like six to nine months. The blobby. No. Be like, oh my God, I don't know how it happened, and just cry and act hysterical. And then we need like, to send Shep a message if he ever comes. In, if he ever comes in contact with a blobby, no, no, <laughs> she's setting you up for that trust fund. No, no. A blobby needs different. to be a script writer. Really, a blobby needs to be a script writer. Reality TV herself. I hate to say it, but there are a group of men that you have to trick into getting pregnant. Yeah, but then you get like a Thomas Ravenall who maybe Catherine thought she was doing that. And then now she's stuck with these kids and now he's having other kids. He has no respect for her and she's just like... No, no, no. That's not the same thing. That's not what I'm saying. No, no, no. That's not the same thing. I didn't say be 20 years old, not be invested in anything in life and drinking at the bar and being a garden tool for every old man in, oh. in the South. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I said trick him. You have to have a good pedigree. You have to have his mother like you. You have to be a nice woman. But some people just need the push. And the push is getting pregnant. He will marry you and he will straighten up. He just needs the push. So then you have to find a special woman who is going to, you have to find a woman who doesn't mind gambling, who's willing to take that gamble. Because listen, if I decide that I want to kids with somebody, I, it would be very nerve wracking to be like, okay, well, I'm going to trick him and hopefully he falls for it. And then we're going to be a happy family and he's going to like that. It's like, you're, you're riding a fine line here. No, he's a good trick. Now you can't do this he's with somebody trick. like Austin. Austin's not going to marry you. Austin's just going to be, you know, playing games, want to play dad two to three times a week. No, or Craig. You can't do this with an Austin or a Craig, but a chef, I'm telling you. The right girl, you have to get pregnant first because he's afraid of that commitment for whatever reason. And he would not, He and when he has the child, it might even take 12 months to after you have the child to get it done. But if, and if it's a boy or a girl, I don't think Craig would, I don't mean, I don't think Shep would have an issue, but Shep, Shep should be somebody's dad. He just isn't going to take the leap of faith. So you just got to gear him into that thing. Okay. Where was this conversation going? I don't know. I don't I know. We were talking about Southern Charm. Then we went into coronavirus. And now we're trying to set Shep up to be a dad. 
<laughs> oh, well, Blobby, you're the best. That's how you have to do it. I mean, I had a friend. I told her this advice. It works wonderfully. You now, told a friend? Yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> she had a boyfriend that was like a chef. And I was like, you should get pregnant. And she was like, no. I was like, he'll marry you. You should get pregnant. Did and they get married? Yeah. You see, you missed your calling. Maybe you're a matchmaker. But uh, but two, a he shady had a commitment matchmaker. problem. He had a <laughs> commitment problem and he had to go into rehab. And he did want the child. Now, be careful about this. This has to be a man who wants children. Don't do this with a man that doesn't want children. It's not moral. It's not right. But okay, half of this crazy. conversation is not moral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't. And if you want to have other tips, I have tips on how to be, um, how to um, show your bush and make sure your bush stays your bush. Anything you want to know. Is that how you for me? Yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Yes. Oh my if gosh. You, if you and your friend like the same guy, I have very good ways on, you know, winning the guy. Okay, so guys, if anybody wants to know how to bag a man in 10 days or less, not how to lose a man, but how to bag that man, reach out to a blobby. And show your bush? What? Okay, I don't anyways. know what that means. That means like, you know, we all have our bush and we don't like, like a dog, we don't like people peeing in our bush. Oh, oh. I think Adam uh, and I were more on the same page. Yeah, yeah, but I like that better. Okay. Me too, me too. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to call in and say that for once I don't agree with you. I think Shep is really progressing. And of course, Craig is a conspiracy theory guy. Like, we saw that coming. Come on now. Yeah, that's so fair. I, I don't think it's a disservice. I think it's a reality show. So you're showing the, the different contrast of how people are managing the beginning of that outbreak. I liked it. I liked seeing it. Shut that's up. fair. That's well, fair. I gotta go. I enjoyed Southern Charm. I watch Salt Lake City. Cause it's on it's on YouTube now. Um, Jen is not a favorite. I'm sorry. Okay, Don't but say are that you to starting Adam. to Don't enjoy it a little bit more after the third episode? I didn't enjoy Matt, Jen at all. You know, she's as annoying as Mary now. <laughs> no, but Salt Lake City. No, you know what it was? <laughs> I like to see attractive women. And I'm sorry I'm vain. And I like to see wealthy women. And I haven't seen either. And you know what? Let's talk about Mary's house for a minute. Oh, my God. When you go on a reality show, do your kitchen. Because this reminds me of Karen in that white kitchen. <laughs> do your kitchen and stay, and then make sure your outside area looks nice. But do that kitchen. You get the designer there. If they oh have God. to put it in and you have to go in another room. Do that kitchen. That kitchen looks like it was from the 90s. And then the stove is broken. Are you kidding me? Oh, my gosh. I'm blobby. Right? <laughs> you are something else. We'll keep you around. Listen, we have room for everybody here, but you are something else. I, I enjoy it. You you put a smile on my face, and you walk a line so fine, and I, I never know where you're going to teeter with it. But this has, been, this has been a fun time. You had me smiling. So... I know that Ablavi, you have to go to the DMV. And yeah. Ooh, Dan, I know that you're at work. So I appreciate both of you ladies calling in. And I hope to do this again next week. Okay. Sounds good. Oh, Thanks no, for no, having me. I'm, I'm on oh. vacation. That's Thanksgiving. That's oh, yeah, me too. So then after next week. Okay. I mean, I'll still be doing lives, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? We can't have dinner with your family anyway. So, meh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you'll be here, Ablavi. All that's right. See you guys soon. All right. Oh, and then Shan, before you go, where can we find you? Adam, you're too sweet. No, you I can go to YouTube and hit Shan in Van. <laughs> Don't forget yeah. to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Is that how I do it? Is Did I do that right? I think so. I mean, just hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell. That way you don't miss any of Shan's lives. There we go. That's it. What he said. What he said. Okay. All right, Shan. <laughs> well, we know that you're working, so we'll let you go. Thanks, guys. Have a good Friday. All right. And then guys, 140 in the room, go ahead, hit that like button. Thank you so much for um, Jason, Jamal, anyone modding. Also go and check out Reality TV Chit Chat Live. Um, thank you guys. And thank you for joining. I do have one other person in the room really quick and we're about to jump off, but I can't not bring her up. Dana, I love you. Hi, Dana. 
Hey, I love you too. I, I was just trying to jump in with those girls. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I I promise that we'll do this again next week, and it's gonna be awesome. And Dana, I do just want to say you've been reaching out consistently about pops and stuff. So, thank you so much for the love and support. I talked to pops on Facetime, and I told him that you were reaching out, and he's like, Dana, I'm I'm gonna jump on popping off with pops. And I said, No, pops, you're not yeah. doing that from a hospital bed. Um because they, they won't really let anybody in the hospital. But he was so excited to hear that people were reaching out. And I also got your message too about making a video for Pops. And I th I'm gonna get with Jason and kind of figure out how we can make a really cool, fun, hey Pops, we're thinking about you, miss you compilation video. Yeah, and I talked to Jason too about uh, a way to do a PO box. So when Pops is at home and stuff, if we want to send him cards and everything, that so we could do it safely. Oh yeah, that's awesome. And Jason actually just mentioned that to me. And he, I, he seriously listens to what everyone says too. He takes it to heart because he immediately went and said, Adam, this PO box right across the street only costs X amount a month. And, and I was like, wow, you're already on it. He's like, yeah, I got this. It's like, okay. Aww. So thank you, Dana. And, um, before we end up going, can I ask you really quick? I know that you you probably watched this episode, but what are we looking forward to most in Southern Charm? I, I just want to see some resolution on less testosterone. Okay. And John Pringle has a lot of testosterone. Yeah. I mean, and I've seen his post online lately and he never smiles and he looks really grumpy. And he posted something yesterday and he looked like he was mad at the world. And I said, I sent a post. I said, you just got your kids. I said, what? I said something like, what's the face about? <laughs> Uh, didn't he? Was that the post where he captioned it something wig? Yeah. And he goes, I'm homeschooling. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, and I was, like, I was like, well, I teach online. You've got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're sending him like the positive words, but also you're still a parent, buddy. Yeah. You, you had a hand in making those chitlins. So. But I did want to, uh, something that I didn't share before that I remembered. You know, we talked about Cameron. Yeah. A long time ago, she was one of the first, um, people that was on MTV's real world. Oh yeah. Isn't it funny how that we get all of these little crossovers, like just real quick. And this has nothing to do with Southern charm, but even like TLC's Darcy and Stacy, they were on millionaire matchmaker. Yeah. It's like, it seems like, or do you remember Caesar from 90 day fiance? Yeah. Caesar Mac. Um, when I was talking to him, he I asked him, I said, man, what's next for you? Because he um, he did pedicures and manicures, and that was his job. And he said, well, you know, like TLC was talking to me about being like doing like a TLC bachelor or maybe even like a naked and afraid. And I was like, oh, so you want to be a career reality television person. That's exactly what you're going for. So you're going to continue to keep going out almost like when we see other people who end up on celebrity boot camp or marriage boot camp. It's like, why are we doing this? Man, my mom loves Naked and Afraid. I just can't. Pops loves Naked and Afraid. Well, they need to get together and watch that show. <laughs> we got to invite your mom on when Pops is back. <laughs> oh, no, 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 we don't. Oh, okay. Okay, we listen, I'll take your word for that. I'll take your <laughs> word for that. We really don't. And I did want to jump in. Two things I wanted to jump in with them is here in Georgia, um, at first they didn't, the governor didn't want to mandate mask because he didn't want to tell people what to do. Right. And all along I kept saying, you know, we really need to wear mask. And then he got where you need to wear mask everywhere. So all the stores have been saying you need to wear masks to come in here. The restaurants have been severely affected. Our theater has been closed the entire time. Um, the stores mainly, the stores, the restaurants have mainly allowed outdoor eating or pick up and go. Um, any delivery has been no contact where they drop it off at your door. Let's see. So, yeah. and now it's about to ramp up again. Yeah, I know it's about to get super strict again. And I'm curious what that means, but I'm, I have a feeling we're about to find out. Eden's getting better. I got tested and I'm negative. Thank God. That's yeah. yeah, that's good. Especially, I mean, and that's important too, is to make sure, especially if you're going to go around anybody, if, if you need to go around anybody to make sure that you at least make like know that you're safe, you're tested, you know that you don't have it and you're not spreading it. 
Yeah, because I didn't want to make my mom sick or, you know, anybody else sick if I needed to go out. Yeah. And um, she stays masked in the house if she needs to walk out to the bathroom or anything. So, um, and the other thing about Shep is he never has to work a day in his life. The only growth I have seen in Shep is he actually apologized recently. And in all the shows, and I could be wrong, that I've ever seen, he's never apologized for anything. That's fair, too. Are you talking about with Madison? Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. They're okay. There's a little bit, listen, again, I feel like that was fair when Shan said that too, like there's growth um, a little bit. And I, maybe I, I jumped the gun with that, but I think where I was stemming from is I just feel like we're dealing with one big man child and maybe a lot of trust fund people kind of have that, you know, Peter Pan syndrome because they don't really need to have a whole lot of responsibility because they know that they're set up for the rest of their life. I'm not one of those people and I'm not bashing those people, but I don't necessarily understand it. But also, I don't I don't have a trust fund that I could sit on and be like, hey, you don't have to work, get to enjoy this and do whatever you want. Because if I did, maybe I'd be just like Shep. Well, he also apologized to um, Austin and stuff. And there may be some underlying um, passive aggressiveness there, but he was trying to make a point to apologize rather than keep it rolling, which is yeah. very different for him because he has the type of personality that he is very intelligent but he tends to think he's more intelligent than everyone. That's so it's a baby step for mankind. Ba <laughs> it's baby, baby steps for them, really. Yeah. Oof. Okay, so you want to see a little bit less testosterone moving forward. And that makes sense. I'm also curious to see how, again, it plays out with Leva and her restaurants to see oh, what's yeah. going with them. That's and terrible. Yeah, that's really terrible, especially because they're such a beautiful family. They seem like they really have it together. And then something like this that you don't expect, especially it's so hard to get a restaurant of any kind or even a business off the ground, let alone multiple businesses. And when you get to that point, you're like, yes, we're doing it. And then something so unexpected that you have no control over comes in and just wipes you out. That it's, it's terrible. Yeah. Hey, I'd be willing to bet that you could get an interview with one of those guys pretty easy. Um, I actually, I talked to John Pringle and, um, I, I reached out to his PR. I, I reached out to his PR, I think last week and I haven't heard anything back. And then Austin, I don't really have an interest in talking to Madison. I would love to miss Patricia. I would definitely sit down with because she reminds me of mama D. Sorry. Sorry. Hey, sorry. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. But no, I, I definitely, I feel like, you know, I'm starting to do interviews again. So we'll see. We're going to reach out to a bunch of people. I'm going to reach out to some of our former Real Housewives of Miami. I'm going to reach out to some um, from New York. I'm, I'm all over the spectrum right now because there's a lot of rumors swirling in the Bravo world of what's to come on other networks, um, other streaming sites like Peacock. It, I'm curious. And I want to jump ahead of it too. Like when I knew Salt Lake City was coming, I was I was talking to these women probably six seven months before they the show even you know aired. So I'm I'm curious, you know. Yeah. But Dana, I really appreciate you joining me today, and I didn't want to end out without bringing you up to have a conversation. And I I just appreciate every time you call. So thank you. Well, thank you so much. And well, I guess you can't give Pop a hug, but send him a virtual hug for me, please. I'll send him a virtual hug and I'm going to send him flowers and I'm just going to put it that it's from all of us. Oh, thank you. Yeah, of course. And um, no, in the meantime, I hope that I see you next week and I'm sure I definitely will. But if I don't, please have a great, great holiday. Happy Thanksgiving. I know it's still a week away, but you never know. You never know when you're going to see people. So I'll be cooking like a demon. <laughs> you don't want me cooking, so I'll probably be ordering in takeout. Okay. Right. Happy Thanksgiving. All right. See you soon. Bye. All right. Bye. Guys, what an awesome show. Um, thank you guys for joining me for this recap. Ablavi, always a pleasure. Shannon Van, thank you so much. Dana, I love Dana. Um, and all of you guys, too, for joining us. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.